Today, our champion, Jim Putney of Holliston, Massachusetts, faces the challenge of Chris Galicka of Palmer, Massachusetts, on camel pin bowling. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Candle Pin Bowling. I'm sure glad once again that you could join us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts for three strings of Candle Pin Bowling, total pinfall determining our winner. As you know, our bowlers always take home a permanent souvenir. That's provided by the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. They also take home some money. We, got, we have guaranteed prize money of $1,200. 700 of that goes to the winner. Half of that, $350, goes to the runner-up. $50 available to the winner of each string. There are other bonuses, and they can. Uh, everybody seems to walk away with money, particularly Jim Putney, week after week. And uh, we have a $50 gift certificate here from True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers, and that will go to our marksman of the day, the bowler with the most marks. And I think that Jim Putney is uh, building a house with his. I'm not quite sure. Uh, okay, let's talk to today's bowler, shall we? First of all, Chris. Turn around so the folks can see you. We haven't seen you for three years. Where have you been hiding? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Rough. It's tough. Tough. Yeah, I know. Those, those roll-offs get tougher and tougher as yeah. younger guys come along. And, That's uh, it. And they get better and better, yeah. don't they? I, I, I realize that. Did you bring uh, the whole family, the three children here to, no. to root for you today? No, two of them, though. No. Two of them, yeah. huh? Oh, so you've got some help. And uh, I'm wondering uh, here, you're a carpenter, so I imagine you expect to have some hammers today. Is that right? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> Jim Putney, I know I'm teasing you a lot. Come over here to where we can see you. But wow, six in a row and four four hundred. Huh? What can I say? It's just been on a roll. You know, it's things are working good, and I just hope they continue. It's... I know what you mean. Well, uh, you're on a roll, so don't roll off today, then. No, no, I hope not. Okay. Good luck to you, as always, and to you, Chris. Nice to have you here. And we'll get underway right after this. Getting us underway, leading off on lane two here at the fairway is challenger Chris Galicka of Palmer, Massachusetts. Great start. Everything down except the seven pin. Yes. So Chris begins with a spare. His league average is 116. His high single 189. His high triple 435. The fill is seven. And he's left with three pins. The one, three, six. For another, no, yes, he missed it, but got a piece of wood to come back and take down the number one. Now Jim Putney, 128 average, six consecutive wins with us. And he begins with a strike. I mentioned that Chris Gilliger is a carpenter. He and Jim could go in business because Jim is a painting and wallpaper contractor. The first ball, for a moment, it looked as if he was going to leave everything across the back, but he has left seven, eight, and ten. Nine has toppled. There's a piece of wood in front of the seven. Three pieces to the right of the eight. And he got just one more. Seven and eight are still there, and Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, calls time and wants to get a ball that has as yet not gone into the pit. It just stayed in the middle. And the hand for Ralph. A nine. 
Three marks in a row. Any combination of strikes or spears in the same string will establish a bonus of $50. Then each consecutive mark in that same string is worth $50 apiece. Let's see whether Chris Kalika can do that. He has two in a row. And right now he's going to be working on the one, three, six, and nine with Wood in front of the six. Head pin this time stayed up as he missed it. <clears throat> as you know, when he made his uh, spare, a piece of wood came back to knock it down. It's a 10. This is the second appearance on our show with Chris Kalika. His last one was a loss to Bob Reynolds, although he rolled a, a fine 355 that day. That was in July of 87. Still going after that head pin and now gets it for another 10. Jim Putney's high single is 200, his high triple 465 to go along with that 128 average. He's representing the Norwood Sports Center and Ficus of Franklin. Oh, yes, he has another strike. sit down for a while and as you know three strikes in a row is an additional bonus of a thousand dollars we'll find out whether or not he gets that right after this Chris Kalika on the line now our challenger half Worcester left side as he chops out the two and eight Chris's high single is 189 and his high triple 435. He had a 657 in winning his roll off and he's representing the State Bowl of Springfield. Tough uh, leave right now. It's the four horsemen right side. 136 and 10 and also the eight pin no wood and he chopped out the three Jim Putney has two strikes in a row. He has three now. He has an extra $1,000 and it's still alive. If he rolls another, he will have $2,000. All right, it stops after that, but three strikes in a row, an additional bonus of 1000 on top of the $50 in bonus money for three marks in a row. And he does not make the spare. He had left the two and the six. They are still there. It's a nine.
Chris Skyka too full this time on the head pin. Now he takes out the right side. He's still left with the two four seven. It's a nine. Seven pins still up. Three, four, six, and ten, and ten stays up. Back comes Jim Putney. Leading, as you can see, by 44 pins through six boxes. Al Gilio is keeping score on the electronic scoreboard, and Keith Williams keeps score on the big board for the folks who are here. Jim trying to rack up another one, but he leaves the seven and eight with Wood. Lots of good wood, but it didn't go. The seven <laughs> remains standing. We've already mentioned Ralph Stewart, who is our lob line judge and referee. to pick up for a spare. The two and four. He has them for another mark. Our crew today is Skip Peabody, Roger Rice, Dick Erickson, and a man I haven't seen for a long time, Leroy McLaurin. got a split here. Before I forget it, I've got to congratulate Leroy and his bowling team, the Queensmen, for winning their division. Leroy, Leroy has changed a little bit since I saw him the last time. He's added dignity. Gray hair on each temple. <laughs> All right, now it's a five and nine that Chris is facing. Oh, just missed that five. That was so close. There it goes for a 10. He finishes with a 106, which is 10 pins beneath his league average. Now Jim Putney. And he punches out down the middle, taking out the one, five, and eight. Everything down except the three and the six. A ten. A ten with the three pin fill on the previous spare. So he's at 145, a 49 pin lead going into the final box of the first string.
One seven and eight is what he's looking at with a couple of pieces of wood down by the seven and eight. Can he use them? Eight pin rock but wouldn't go. The other two did. Now Ralph calls time. He's got a check on a piece of wood that has come forward toward the Deadwood line. Now it's moving back. Moving back in play and rolling toward the pit. And off. He's got it for a 155. And another $50 in bonus money goes to Jim Putney for winning the first string by a score of 155 to 106. In the middle string, our defending champion leads it off. It's Jim Putney and has been for several weeks. So close to another strike, left the 10 pin. And a spare. Strike on spare. He wasn't kidding when he said he's on a roll. And of course he did well in the state tournament too. Teamed with Dick O'Connell in the men's double. And Chris Kalicka comes back with a strike. Today's challenger. That was just a wee bit too full on the head pin. He got five. His object pin becomes the three as he's got three, six, ten over on the right, plus seven and eight and wood to the left of the three pin. Can he hit that three six pocket or no, he went to the uh, domino effect, went to the left side of it and left seven and 10. They're still there. As we were mentioning our crew, we also should mention our post-production videotape editors, George Ellard and Doug DeVitt, who, along with Phil Rubin, make this possible. Big bang as he gets nine more with the first ball after his strike. Going for more bonus money, one pin to knock down right now. That is the four pin with Wood. He has it. So $50 more in bonus money. And he's up to $150 plus the $1,000 bonus for three strikes in a row. He's still alive, of course, now that he has established three marks in a row. Every mark in this string that is consecutive will be worth $50 a piece as long as he can keep it going. Seven is the fill, and he has a triangle. It's one of those tricky ones. Did not get it as he took out the five pin, but did not touch the two, which he had to do, obviously, to make the, the triangle go. So that bonus streak stopped after three. Now challenger Chris Galicka. Eight of them tumbled for Chris, but the two that are standing are side by side. It's a nine and ten. However, there is some wood which should help. And it got just one of them, the nine. And as it tumbled, it tumbled toward the 10, but not close enough to hit it. Oh, 
10. One three seven with no wood is what he has left. Got just the one. Uh, thanks to Tom G. Carr of Longmeadow, who sent us a nice letter and enclosed an item from the Springfield Journal on cattle pin bowling, written by Larry Gormley. Very interesting. Okay, we're going to take another check on the scoreboard. As you know, it was Putney 155, Gallica 106 after the first string. Right now, Jim has added to that lead. He leads after four in the middle string, 67 to 45. Defending champion, Jim Putney of Holliston. Four, five, seven, and ten. That takes care of the four and seven. It's an eight box. One thing that I appreciate about Tom Carr's letter was that he said, I guess I watch your show every Saturday since it went on the air in this area many years ago, meaning Longmeadow. For the last six years, your description of the bowling has been appreciated because I am legally blind. I always appreciate those letters. And uh, every time I start thinking Hey, Gillis, you're talking too much. I remember you folks who have written me who are legally blind and uh, or totally blind and who appreciate the fact that I give you a picture. And you can listen to the reaction here and listen to the pins going down, and I will describe to you what has happened. A 10 box for Jim Putney. Now our challenger, Chris Gillicka from Palmer, Massachusetts. He has everything down except the six pin. There are a couple of pieces of wood around it, but they're not necessarily in a favorable position. However, I think he can do it. He did. So spare in the fifth. Too bad, too full on the head pin spread eagle. That means that the one, five, seven, and uh, or rather eight and nine went. He just took out the right side. Nine. Jim Putney leaves the five, seven, nine, ten, and one single piece of wood over toward the left. Half in the gutter and half on the lane near the seven. What a great shot he just pulled off. He didn't get the seven, but he got the five and the nine and the ten. It's a ten box. I have a nice note from Louis V. Thorpe of Lynn, Massachusetts. Unfortunately, uh, because the programs are taped in advance, 
it did not arrive in time for me to make mention of it before an event which was taking place on May 22nd. And that was because, by the way, Lou Thorpe is 94 years old. And uh, he reminded me that we sent him some birthday greetings four years ago on his 90th birthday. And he's still at 94, bowls twice a week at the Linway Alleys in Lynn. It's a nine box. And he asked me to send greetings to uh, Henry Martell because he organized the Senior Citizens Bowling League and in the last 20 years, it has grown from one day now to three days. One pin left, the five pin right now, the king pin, for Chris Galicka to pick up. And about 200 bowlers. Yes, he has the spare. So they had a special night for Henry Martel, receiving citations for his job for keeping nearly 200 people happy over the last 20 years or so. So congratulations to Henry Martel and also Louis Thorpe at 94. Hope you keep bowling for a lot more years. Bless you. Whoa, a beautiful shot for a spare for Chris Skalicka and he has two in a row going into the final two when he gets up again after Jim Putney. Contrast, of course, with Jim having rolled a 155 opener. He's at 104 after eight here in the middle string. Chance for another mark, however, with the 4-7 over on the left-hand corner and a piece of favorable wood. He has it. 114 and a box to go. Six is the fill. He's left the one, two, four, ten. Got the one, two, four, but the uh, ten pin still there. So this is for a one thirty, and he has a one thirty. Now let's see what Chris Galecka can do. He has two marks in a row. Let's see if he can put another one up there for fifty dollars in bonus money. Six is the fill. And what he's looking at is basically a triangle plus one, or what it amounts to is he's got the two pin behind it, the four, five, and over in the corner, the seven. Two, four, five, and seven. For a spare. Oh, too bad. Just got two of them. A 10, 111. Everything down except the kingpin, the five. For a moment, it looked like a strike. For a spare, yes. 121. A nine ties the string with Jim Putney. A 10 wins him 50, a tie wins him 25, anything less, and the $50 goes to Jim Putney for winning the middle string. Let's see what he gets. He needed one more for the tie. He got eight for the fill, and it's a 129. So it's another $50 in bonus money going to Jim Putney as he has won the first and the second string. And he won this one by one pin, 130 to 129.
Chris Skalik, our challenger, on the line, leading off in the third string. He trails our defending champion, Jim Putney, by 50 pins, 285 to 235. He's left diamond left, two, four, five, and eight, and over on the right, the six and 10, and no wood. Ooh, right down the gap between those two setups. It winds up as an eight box. Now to lane three here at the fairway. The ball drifted on him a bit, went to the right. Didn't get the head pin. And he has one, two, seven, eight, ten. One, eight, and ten still there. A pair of eights. Jim Putney well on his way to what would be his fifth 400 in seven appearances. He right now, of course, is top seed for our championship show. The last week in August, our $20,000 True Value Championship show, $10,000 first prize. Gary Carrington, 10 pins behind, at, in second seed at 435, then Steve Reno at 433. It's a 10. Don Santiago's 425 has him in fourth place. And Paul Berger is fifth with a 421. A split of two pins left and, and uh, two right. The two that are remaining right now are the six and ten as he has taken out the two and four. So a pair of eights is beaten by a pair of tens here. Chris Galicka. No wood to help, but another one of those tricky triangles. This one's made up of the two, four, and five. Can he make it? No, once again, it's just one wing that went, the five. A nine box. A fine veteran candle pin bowler will be our challenger next week, Hugh Ferguson. A nine. So we, we've seen a pair of eights, a pair of nines, and a pair of tens. And now let's see what Jim Putney will roll. Jim, who had three, in case you weren't here, he had three strikes in a row in the first string. Everything down except the five pin here. Only two bowlers in the history of our program, which started back in 1958, have ever had four strikes in a row, and they're both from Lynn, Massachusetts, George Raymond and Jim Barber. And then uh, it turned out to be, excuse me, there are three. There were two for the longest time, and then Dick O'Connell had four strikes in a row. 
uh, last year. But for the longest time, we only had the two guys from Lynn. Forty-two to thirty-four right now after four, and Chris Gillica comes up, hoping he can win one of these strings and maybe put together some bonus money. Three, six, nine, and ten. That's what he's looking at. And he punches out the six. It turns out to be an eight box. Now he has a lot of wood around a triangle. The triangle this time is the six, nine, and ten, and this should go with the wood. It did. Jim Putney, he's had one mark so far in the third string. A bit of a thin hit to the left side. One, three, four, seven. That's what's standing. Got the one, three, four, seven still there. Nine bucks as he took out the ten, uh, the seven rather, and left the four. was a hammer. Pow. Just three in the fill, and then he went through the same opening. So there are seven pins still there, and uh, the object pin is the number one. Ooh, no profit here as he winds up with a five box. Four horsemen right side and in the back. It's the nine pin, so it's one, three, six, nine, ten, as he goes for it with no wood, and nope. Basically did a punch out, uh, what would it be a half Worcester, took out the three and the nine and left the one, six, and ten, took the one that time. Six and ten still there, and it's an eight, and so he's at 68 right now after eight in the third string. And our defending champion, Jim Putney, is working on a strike. First bonus ball. Oh, he came close. Everything down except the six pin. Market. Strike followed by Spear. Oh, 
Eight more. Is he going to make it three in a row? He, oh, missed the two pins entirely that would have been worth another $50 in bonus money and comes back with a sheepish grin on his face as much as to say, how could I have missed that? Chris Kalika. That's what he has a shot at. Uh, let's see, what have been his 400 so far? I know he needs one. Single pin and some wood rolling around right now for Chris Kalika. Yes. All right, let's see what uh, he's going to finally wind up with. No question, uh, obviously. One pin still standing. He's had a four twenty eight, an even four hundred, a four forty five, a four oh five, and right now. Four oh. Well, wait a while. See if he gets this one. And seven more. And he's done it again with five 400s in seven appearances on our program. The final score, 411 to 326. $150 in our home viewer jackpot, and the total today is 737. If I pick a card that uh, is 10 pins either side of that, that person will uh, receive it, but otherwise uh, we'll be receiving all that money. Otherwise, even if it's nowhere near that, just having the card chosen will get that person these prizes. A Coleman cooking machine, the Coleman Company, invites you to enjoy the great outdoors this summer. Stop by your local sporting goods department and check out some of the new innovative ideas from Coleman. 
And Solder Seal Gunk Heavy Duty Puncture Seal provides security in a can. Seals and inflates all types of tires while on the car. Keep a can of Solder Seal Gunk Puncture Seal in your trunk. And an Ames Folding Camper Shovel. It's strong enough for any digging chore, yet small enough to fit in a backpack or tote bag. The steel blade locks in three separate positions for digging, scraping, or chipping. Before I draw a card, just a reminder, one card per person per day, and uh, always a postcard. Send it, please, to this address, Candlepin Bowling, WCVB-TV, 5 TV Place, Needham, Massachusetts, zip code number 02192. When we have a winner, we empty this and start at $50 all over again. All right, let's find out now whether we have a winner today. 737, anywhere from 727 to 747 would win $150. And this card comes from... Uh, Nashua, New Hampshire, Harris Road, Noyce and Evelyn Leonard have guessed 775. Okay, so next week it's going to be up to 200. $100 in the Hilo jackpot, and you know something about that, Jim Putney. So let's see what you can do with it. Not today, but Chris, maybe you can do it. That's part of it. Stay here, if you would, please, Chris, right over here. Let the folks get another look at you. And uh, son of a gun, I can't find any bonus money here. No, no. <laughs> well, we have this little souvenir for you okay. anyway. And $350 will be going along to you. And uh, don't stay away three years the next time, will you? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Hi. Good luck, John. And his it's, name again? It's Brendan, yeah. Yeah, uh, Brendan. How about that? Once again, the big trophy. Once again, the $50 gift certificate from True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. And a $1,000 bonus for three strikes in a row, another $250, $700 for winning. That comes to $1,950. And how about that five 400s in seven weeks, huh? Uh, what can I say? I mean, I, you know, it's just going through the motions and the pins are falling and... Well, I, I think that's what I got. I got my go. He wants to shake your hand, Don. <laughs> Hi, Brendan. God love you. You're a cutie. Okay, Huey Ferguson is going to be your challenger next week, so bring your best. I will. Woman. All right. Okay. Bye bye, everybody. Don Gillis for the whole crew. We'll see you then.